Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. I'm going to take you on a tour of Climate Viewer 3D. Um, this is your world. You might as well monitor it and know what's going on. And that's why I built this uh, pretty epic map. Um, it's available at climateviewer.com. You can just click right here to go to it. it the website is at climateviewer.org. As I always mention, everything that you're about to see is free of charge, open source, and advertisement free. Please support me by clicking on my Patreon link here if you want to give a monthly donation or buy me a coffee. Um, always helpful obviously i do this at night when my daughters are asleep um plus it's kind of quiet uh, i live near a highway so you don't want to hear a whole bunch of cars driving by uh regardless um my daughter calls me batman because i'm trying to save the world all night long and i think you're going to see that very shortly so i'm over here on climateviewer.org and uh, I've already pulled up some stuff on the map. So what's the idea behind this Climate Viewer 3D thing? Well, what it does is it allows you to see many things simultaneously. And what I've pulled up on the map to begin with is one of the first correlations that I've noticed um, with Climate Viewer 3D. And that is that where there are fracking wells, there is drought. And where there is fracking wells and drought, there is weather modification. And the idea is pretty simple. Um, fracking wells use lots of water. And as a result, that leads to drought. And because all of these are fracking wells that you see here, you can click on them and it'll tell you this is Apache Corporation and the chemicals that they use, um, type oil production, yada yada. Um, fracture date 2012 things like that and the the red areas you're seeing here are drought um, and then these little fire icons are cloud seeding generators and these little mountain icons are snowpack augmentation all this can be found in the geoengineering section geoengineering and weather modification and you can see global weather modification projects all the cloud seeding generators and NOAA weather reports appear in the climate change and energy pollution section. You can see Fracking America chemical database. Um, and then all the way up here at the top in the live alerts, precipitation and radar, you can see U.S. drought monitor. So what I noticed was that that's a correlation that is pretty visible where there is a lot of fracking there's a lot of water use and as a result there is a lot of weather modification so that's the purpose of climate viewer 3d is to try to see the big picture and see how things relate and as you can see these clearly relate um this is just one of many things that you can do as you can see there are 702 maps now available on climate viewer 3d um, I just updated it uh, yesterday. I did a tutorial video on that. If you'd like to watch that tutorial video, just scroll all the way down here to the bottom. And right here at the very bottom, you'll see an instructions button. You can click on that. And there's a tutorial video right here. Just click that thing. And it'll play the video just like so. And you can make that full screen if you like and dig into that. So that's Climate Viewer 3D. That's how you use it. Um, you use it to see many things simultaneously. During uh, the hur Hurricane Harvey, um, a lot of people were concerned about flooding. So one of the things I used it for, I'm gonna hit the trash can icon right here to clear all of this off the map. And what I used it for was to track um, nuclear reactors and uh, her, you know, flood levels. So to do that, you click on precipitation and any icon with a red marker right here is a very large map. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. It's gonna take a second to load up because it's pretty large. Um, and what happens is this will show you in real time all of the rivers in America and if they are currently flooding, green is good, red is bad so right here you see a red one 
um, scroll down to that and you can see flood stage major flood stage 26 feet moderate 24 flood stage at 22 feet and the current observation is 24.36 feet so 23 24.36 feet is between moderate and major flood stage currently that river is flooding um, so what I did during Hurricane Harvey was down here in Texas I was looking at you know uh, the hurricane rolling in you can track hurricanes by clicking right here under hurricanes and tropical cyclones and you can actually see their past current course there isn't one right now but regardless what I also did was I came down here to the nuclear section so nuclear explosions radiation and waste and I just turn on all my nuclear reactors and I'll do that really quickly and you can see right here um here are some of the nuclear reactors over in Texas these are over in Louisiana and you can click on those there's photos associated with all these 440 nuclear reactors yes this map took these six maps took me three months to create um, especially to find photos of every single nuclear reactor it was a real pain in the butt but you can also see when the power, the reactor was created constructed 1977 connected to the electrical grid 1985 it has a power rating of 978 megawatts the name of it and all that stuff um, Wikipedia page link um, the IAEA power reactor information system link right there and of course the photos like I said so over here in um, in Texas during the flood stage you know when Hurricane Harvey was coming in I noticed that this one South Texas number one was flooded now we all know what happened with the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear meltdown um, it was caused by a tsunami that flooded the intake valves of the nuclear reactor and that was a major problem so anytime there's a major storm event I look for flooding in uh, nuclear reactors um, always a concern now I think uh, right about here let's see if we can find it there's one right here in the middle that here let me uh, I'm gonna have to cut this off real quick let's cut off the the, the river flood levels real quick but I think it's this one no where is it at there's one right in here I've got an actual photo of one there you go here's an actual flooded nuclear reactor right there boom we'll open that one up in another tab and I'll blow it up for you but you can see that is what a nuclear reactor looks like when it's underwater <laughs> so this is a concern constantly and you can see that they've got like a little inflatable tube around the nuclear reactor um, so this is how I monitor the world in real time. All of the the um, you know the stuff at the top of the map is um, live data. So you know that this stuff is available um, in real time. Let's reset that back to default. So we have live alerts, live satellites, um, and the sort. So under live alerts we've got air quality you can actually see what the air is like all around america at any given time green being good yellow being moderate and then orange being worst ozone unhealthy for sensitive groups red being the worst of all and you know as you can see i live in Sumter, south carolina green is good green is good um, but you know, occasionally you're going to see these pop off red and that's, that's a red flag for you. So if you want to know what your air quality is like, you can come over here and do that. Um, underneath that we have earthquakes. So you can bring those up by clicking here and see all of the earthquakes around the world. Now I've got several different sources for all of these. These are the USGS, um, feeds right here. You can even see like the tectonic plate boundaries. Um, you know to see where the fracture lines are um, and but a really special one is this Euromed earthquakes because it actually shows a lot more than the United States Geological Society would like you to see because it comes from Europe and apparently they're a little better at tracking fracking earthquakes because right here in the middle in Oklahoma 
there's a lot of fracking wells here and these never ever show up on the USGS website. So that's why I, I try to find multiple different sources. In addition, you know, we all know that the Kilauea volcano is going off right now. So when you see these pop up, you can just click on the links here and it'll actually fly you to that um, location. So, ooh, boy, that's a whole lot of earthquakes right there around Kilauea. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom. And to do that, we go to base globe. And under base globe, you have two different satellite views, ESRI, aerial, and Bing aerial. So I'm going to click on Bing. And we can actually see the satellite view of the Kilauea volcano region right here. Um, and I want to make that 3D now. So let's click that and give that just a second to pop back up and it's going to stick all those back on the ground and there's so many damn earthquakes there that we can barely even see um the ground let's make that full screen that is a ton of earthquakes around that volcano um the bigger the icon the bigger the earthquake as you can see that's a 4.9 that's a 4.19 and the smaller ones are like 2.4. But regardless, that's a whole lot of earthquakes going on around the Kilauea uh, volcano. So if you want to actually see volcanoes going off, you can go down to the next section. Right underneath earthquakes, we have fire, smoke, and volcanic activity. And you can click on active volcanoes and eruptions this week. So let's turn that on. Give it just a second to load up. Don't fail me now, internets. I know we're live streaming, but these are all pulled live from the internets, from their original sources. There's the Kilauea volcano, and you can see this is also from the USGS, Smithsonian Institute for uh, Global Volcanism Program. I pulled this directly from their website. There's an I for information icon next to each of these layers. When you click on that, you can see where I got this information from. Smithsonian Institute National Museum of History, Global Volcanism Program. More info link is at www.volcano.si.edu. That's where I'm pulling this information from live. Um, and then there's a KML file associated with that. That's a Google Earth file. You can download it yourself. You can click share link and this will actually share just the volcano layer and report errors. If you have any problems, you just click this report error button and that will allow you to email me and let me know something's going wrong. So that's how you use this thing. And you know, like I said, you can see all of the volcanoes of the world that are currently popping off and just click this and fly around to them and then see them in 3d. Pretty neat stuff. So there's another one that's going off. Click over here and it'll instantly fly you to them. Pretty neat. And you can see them in 3D as long as you've turned on the 3D terrain. So I have a lot of fun with this. This is kind of like my own personal video game. And uh, <laughs> I think that you guys will find it pretty cool if you ever dig into it. I will be making a mobile friendly version of this in the near future. Um, because not everybody has a 3D video card and a fast computer like I do. Um, so if you want to see all of the volcanoes of the world, right underneath that is global volcanoes. And that will actually bring up every single volcano on the planet. And now you can see them all. There's the Ring of Fire. And as you can see, there are many volcanoes all the way around the Pacific Ocean. Holy wow, that's a lot of volcanoes. So... Um, this is real fun for me. It, you know, it's a way for me to instantly know what's going on in the world all in one place without having to go to a hundred separate websites. Um, I used to have space weather modification. I mean, space weather tracking, flight tracking, satellite tracking, boat tracking. I'm putting all that back on the map. It will be coming back. Um, let's clear this map off real quick and give some other examples. You can see all of the fires currently going on in the world by turning on uh, the layers right underneath that. And give it just a second to load up. And you see the red dots. Um, like I said, you know, 
sometimes I want to use the satellite view. Sometimes I want to use one of these dark views because they're easier to see. White, not so much. Let's go to the night view. Ooh, that's pretty. Earth at night. Um, red dots are fire. You can go all the way around. And of course, like I always tell people, Africa is always on fire because guess what? There's a lot of people burning fires to cook with. So lots of fire around the world. You can track the entire world's fires just by clicking on those two layers. Um, let's go down here. I'm going to cut those off real quick. And you can cut these on and off by either clicking on the little eyeball icon or just the text itself. It's very simple to use. Um, you have smoke detection. Um, this will show you where smoke plumes are currently. What's going on here? wonder what that's all about. So maybe there's a, a huge fire or something in that location. Let's turn that back on and take a look. Um, cause I, I didn't seem to notice a lot of fires there, but regardless, that's a bunch, bunch of smoke coming out of that area. Um, and lots of different layers for that stuff. Okay. Anyway, let's cut that off. Uh, let's do uh, radar and lightning real quick because this is a fun one. So I'm going to click on precipitation and radar and I'm going to click on next rad radar. And I'm going to go down here to the black map because it shows up better on there. So now I can see the current rainfall around the globe. Now what you're going to notice is I have two different radars on here. I have the one that they show you on TV, which is rainfall US next rad radar base reflectivity and then the ridge to mosaic. Now, if you compare the two, you can do that by adjusting these sliders and you'll see this is what they show you on TV and this is the unfiltered version. So let's just cut off the one from TV and it's more accurate. Um, shows a lot of really weird stuff at times. Uh, you'll see some anomalies that they don't really want you to see like chaff, um, like, you know, the chemtrails, things like that stuff. You're not going to see on television. Um, but yeah, it's fun to play with. Let me get, turn this one back up and then we're going to come up here to lightning strike density and turn that on and we can see all of the lightning strikes around the world. Doesn't seem to be a lot of thunder right now. Come on. Is it still loading? Give it a second. Must be still loading. Obviously their feed is down. Now, because all of this stuff at the top is live layers, occasionally they will not load. It's totally dependent on the source that I'm pulling it from. And, you know, I'm looking over here right now. I'm not seeing any errors. It loaded correctly. So obviously they've got a problem with their little computer. Uh, but regardless, it is loading up and I'm not seeing any lightning currently. Maybe there's just no lightning right now. That's pretty freaky. Um, but anyway, so under precipitation, there's a whole lot of stuff under here. Whenever you're a weather forecaster is going to tell you, uh, you know, what's going to happen over the next 24, 48 hours, things like that. These come from something called the, uh, Ooh, wrong, wrong, wrong layer. Global 24 hour flood forecast is what I actually clicked on and I didn't mean to do that. Where is it out? US six hour rainfall forecast is what I was looking from. This is from the NOAA National Weather Service Weather Prediction Center HPC quantitative precipitation forecast. They're called QPFs. Um, let's see if these load up. And, you know, like I said, these are going to be completely random. Sometimes, let's see, what are they saying over there? It is now loaded. There we go. So this is what your weather forecaster is actually using. He just goes and looks at the same maps that you're looking at right now live. And it'll show you that in the next six hours, this is what they expect. Um, this light green area is 0.1 inches. Right here in the center of this is 1.75 inches, and this is over the next six hours. So you can actually go and pull up an even bigger one by going five day rainfall forecast right underneath that. And you can see this is what they're expecting over the next five days. So this is how the weatherman, you know, views the information before he goes on television. And why bother with that guy when you could just do it yourself? 
So that's the idea behind Climate Viewer 3D. I can go in here and I can click around and I can see pretty much everything they're going to tell me before they tell me because I'm pulling it from the original source. So this is www.wpc.ncep.noaa.gov. So I'm pulling it directly from there when you click the button. Um, all of these are real time. Uh, you know, you've got river gauges, snowfall monitors, snow depth, um, all of that sort of stuff. Um, surface wind observations, um, you know, like, you know, wh where's the wind at currently? Um, wind barbs, if you like that sort of thing. Um, they got the little arrows and stuff. I can actually add the wind map thing to this. You know, if anybody's ever been to the wind map, I, I might actually do that in the future because I really like the way they visualize the wind. It's pretty fascinating. Um, you got hurricanes, you got warnings and watches. You click this thing on and it'll show you where all of the current warnings are around the United States. So if you click on this one, it'll say cold heat. Um, there's a heat advisory down in Texas. Big surprise there. What's this green one over here? Uh, flood advisory over there. Um, off the coast of California. What do we got here? Gale warnings. Um, so this is a way to tell, you know, like in advance, you know, what to look out for. A way to monitor your world in real time. Um, they got this is a group of long ter duration hazards. They have short duration hazards. What's that? That's kind of in my neck of the woods. Uh, what do we got here? And then links to things like that. So you can just flash flood warnings in uh, near Asheville and Charlotte, North Carolina. So apparently they're expecting a lot of rain right there. Um, and that's what I do with this thing. So that's just the weather section. Over here in the NASA satellite section, you can actually bring that up and you can see the NASA satellites for today. Everything available on NASA's WorldWind is currently available on Climate Viewer 3D. So you can just come here and check that out your damn self. You don't have to go over to the NASA website to do it. Um, when you load up any of these NASA layers, it'll say choose imagery date on that. You can just click that sucker and change the date and go pick a different day and zoom in and see what's going on that day. So you can go on a lot of these, you can go back as far as um, the year 2000 and it'll tell you on each one. On this current, the visible imagery one, available imagery goes back to 2003. So if you wanted to, you could come up here and go to 2008 and then back to 2003 and June and say June 4th. 2003 and you can see what the images look like back then um, pretty fascinating stuff I have a lot of fun with it um, underneath that they've got the 367 man it actually highlights ship tracks and contrails pretty crazy stuff so there's some ship tracks for you boom and this is May 28 2018 so that just happened let's close that out these are ship tracks, people. If you've never heard of ship tracks, they are contrails on crack. They are chemtrails from hell. Um, they are usually the size of states. And uh, this is part of the reason why California has no rain. As you can see, whenever ships use bunker fuel to make ship tracks, um, they make something called marine stratocumulus. And these clouds um, put a lot of seeds into the sky that scavenge water and all that water seems to dry up before it ever reaches California. So while everybody blames chemtrails for the California drought, nobody really talks about ship tracks. And as you can see, these are boat trails. They come from ships, international shipping. When you're buying all this you know, plastic crap from China, just remember that there are mega large ships that travel over the Pacific Ocean and they create chemtrails that make the ones you see over your house look minuscule. As you can see up here at the top, there's a little meter. It says 50 kilometers. So that's 50, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 kilometers worth of freaking chemtrail right there. Just in that one line. Um, and, you know, obviously the chemtrails that we're seeing, they're not even visible on the satellite. So you can imagine how large these are and they cover the entire Pacific Ocean. So 
you can also see that a lot of the pollution coming from China is leading to the problems that we're having. So what happens on a typical day is, you know, all of the aerosols that are coming off of China, they blow across the ocean, they mix up here, run up here by harp, and then by the time they get over here, you know, most of that water that should be falling on us is not. Pretty scary stuff. So this is a great way to view your world. Um, you can see things like ocean chlorophyll, um, you know, where the algae blooms are, where they're not blooming. Um, usually if you come over here to China, you're going to see some pretty creepy stuff. There's South Korea, big algae blooms. Um, you can see uh, the sea surface temperature, how hot and cold the ocean is. Um, all over the globe, pretty fascinating imagery. So all of this is in real time. And of course, this one also has a date picker. You can go back in time and see this way back. Um, pretty fun stuff to look at. And you can see where the warm currents are, where the cold water is, sea ice extent, things like that. If you want to actually see where the sea ice is, um, it's highlighted in pink there. That's where the frozen ice currently is. Um, all of this in real time, all in one place. Um, you're not going to find it anywhere else because Climate Viewer 3D is unique. Water vapor, um, things like you know that. You can go see this. That's uh, your water in the sky. Um, just tons and tons of stuff. So this is the live layers at the top. Um, let me cut those off real quick. I'm going to scroll to the top and I'm going to hit collapse and that'll collapse all that back down. Other satellites I have available, um, everything from the European Organization for Exploitation of Meteorological Satellites. They've got a whole bunch of layers as well. Um, some pretty cool ones. It's nighttime right now, so there's not going to be a whole lot on that more than likely because uh, like I said, this stuff is in real time. Ooh, look, it's already daytime over there, so that looks pretty cool. Let's go to the 45.1 degree also and bring that up. And you can see this is Earth natural color. Pretty sharp stuff. As you zoom in, it'll resharpen itself. Is that some chemtrail action over there on Saudi Arabia right now? Pretty crazy stuff. Anyway. I have fun looking at my world, and it's your world too, so you might as well monitor it. And this is a great way to do that. You're not going to find all of this um, anywhere else. You'll have to go to 100 websites to see all of this information. That's why I put it all together. That's right, Jim Phelps. Phytoplankton and algae blooms are extremely important. They're on the decline. And that's because we've screwed up the water cycle. I will be doing another video on that in the near future. Um, but that's part of the part of the reason why I monitor all of this stuff simultaneously. Uh, volcanic ash right there. That's a good one too. Pretty cool looking layer. Um, wow, interesting stuff. I don't even know why that would be considered volcanic ash. Because are there any volcanoes out there in the middle of the freaking Indian Ocean? Um, but regardless, it's on the map. So have fun looking through these, all of the live layers, they, you know, some days are going to work, some days are not. I cannot control the computers on the other end of the, the spectrum, but I can at least link to them and give you, um, you know, all the, you know, ability to jump into that too. I'm going to be open, adding the new goes R as soon as they're available. They're still testing all that. Underneath that is my maps. Now there's six sections here, atmospheric sensors and EMF sites. Um, with things like, you know, harp, everybody's heard about harp. So you can go right here, click on high frequency active oral research program. And instantaneously you will be flown to the harp facility and you can see it in 3d as well. Zoom down here, see the antennas. There they are. Click on the little button right here. And like I said, each one of these dots that I created, um, in my sections are like many web pages. So as you can see in this one, there are several photos, a whole lot of text. You can read it, link to my HARP article, link to the University of Alaska's HARP page, their Facebook page. 
I've got a web archive.org link to their old web page that was deleted when the U.S. Air Force was uh, running the damn facility and all that sort of thing. So aircraft alert radar, VHF ionospheric radar, uh, modular UHF radar. There's a whole lot of different instruments at the HARP facility. I mapped them all out. You can fly through that. The HARP buoy down on the other side of the ocean, part of the HARP one hop experiment. It's all the way down here on the bottom of the planet. Because what happens is when HARP is firing at signals, they go out into space and they come around here to the, north, the South Pole. They create artificial aurora down here and then it bounces back up on the Van Allen belts to HARP. That's called a two hop. So the one hop experiment is a hop is going all the way down here and then one hop all the way back. The high latitude monitoring station, which is near um, Anchorage, Alaska. Most people don't know about this. This is also part of HARP. Um, they've got a bunch of antennas up here and it's for monitoring HARP. So the actual HARP program is all of this together. They've got the Arctic Village Station, Delta Station, and Cordova Station, the high latitude monitoring system, um, station. And over here at the Poker Flat Rocket Range, they got the Poker Flat in ISR or Incoherent Scatter Radar. It's like a little mini harp. It's right there. Um, the Poker Flat Imaging Rheometer, um, pictures of that. I scour the internet for these photos and information. Um, this Just this harp map took about a month to create. Um, so you can look through that. The Poker Flat LiDAR, they've got a laser beam that they shoot into space from there you see the little green line got a big uh liquid mercury freaking um <laughs> reflector on it pretty impressive stuff that's just the heart map so you got things like the ionospheric heaters worldwide um this is all of the ionospheric heaters across the globe and harp is only one of many as you can see um, and you can flip through those and see, like, this is, a you know, um, the NMRF, National MST Radar Facility, 2.5 megawatts. And you can see this field of green glowing antennas or the Shigaraki MU Observatory, which has got one of the coolest looking harps I've ever seen. This round is circular. Um, you know, uh, the one at Arecibo, Puerto Rico which is one of the newest ones. It was actually one of the oldest ones till it was destroyed by Hurricane Bob, and now they rebuilt it. It was destroyed in the 80s. Down here, Chica Marca, Peru at 4.5 megawatts. Pretty impressive stuff. Um, the Russian Woodpecker um, and the Chernobyl Meltdown. The Russian Woodpecker was blamed for doing weather warfare over America in the 80s. You can uh, see all the information on that right here. Is ELF able to manipulate the weather? Pretty crazy stuff, guys. And did you even know that the Russian woodpecker is that close to the Chernobyl reactor? So this Russian wood. Pecker or the Duga three radar was actually powered by the Chernobyl nuclear reactor. And it is a mighty big coincidence that two years after we had the coldest winters on record in 1983, that this thing melted down. And I don't find it to be a coincidence at all. I believe that personally that we blew the damn thing up because they were doing weather warfare over America. Um, great documentary on that, the Russian woodpecker on YouTube. Um, but that's just the facts. This is you know, one kilometer, this is nine kilometers away. So very close. And this is in the nuclear exclusion zone. You can come down here to nuclear explosions, radiation and waste, click on Chernobyl fallout. And you can see that that is right in the middle of the radioactive zone. So there you go. That's it in 3D. That is the Chernobyl radiation that is there to this day since the 80s. If you scroll right into the middle of it, let's see right here. Let me go back up here and we'll just fly to it. Chernobyl reactor. 
you can see right there, there's the Chernobyl reactor right in the middle of the red area. There's the Duga 3 radar or the woodpecker in the nuclear exclusion zone. You can take a trip to the Chernobyl reactor if you like. While you're there, go by the Duga 3 uh, woodpecker. That'd be pretty fascinating stuff. But make sure you carry your dosimeter because you don't want to get nuked to death. So underneath that, I've got missile defense radars, a.k.a. Star Wars, a.k.a. the Space Fence. And you can see all of the, the missile defense radars worldwide. Now this map took several months to make. I don't even remember how long it took me to make this one. I've been adding to it ever since. But um, lots of uh, really fascinating stuff on this map, like... The nav spas or, or this is the original space fence. It runs all the way across America in a straight line. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, and there's one. Oh, that's a paid pause. Sorry. And there's one. And you get the big one, the ANFPS 85. You can see that bad boy right there. And, of course, I'm pretty accurate with this stuff. So if you click the little icon right here, the little camera icon, it'll fly you down to the ground. And it'll let you see that each of these dots is directly on top of the actual facility. So I kind of played Where's Waldo and went and found all of these facilities. I didn't just randomly put these dots on the map. Um, they're all actual real things. So... You have things like the Jindalee Operational Radar Network or JORN down in Australia. You can fly around to these. Uh, this is what they look like. Pictures of how they work and all that, where their radar coverage are. Photos of the actual instruments um, galore. I'm a nerd. Hey, man, I'm fascinated by resonations, guys. So what do you expect me to do? Um, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. Um, kind of hard to find this stuff, but not for you because I've already done all the work. So scroll through those. Auth B over in America, very, very large radars. Um, as you can see here, there's a receiver and the array and, uh, Where's the control station there? Over the horizon, shortwave radar right there in China. A uh, surface wave radar, excuse me. That's a surface wave radar. Um, some of this is in Russian. This is coastal station over the horizon surface wave radar. Pretty fascinating stuff. And that is right off the coast of China. Right across from China, of course, we have our own pointed right back at them. And this is Taiwan's massive, mega powerful radar system is finally operational. It's a paved pause. Um, you can zoom right down to the ground and see that I actually did find that facility. This is the one we have pointed at China. Very big. These guys make a uh, heart look small in many, many cases. These are very, very, very powerful microwaves. Um, and I've got them all around the world, Swordfish, uh, the Peace Ruby system, you know, the list goes on and on and on. I've got all the Russian ones too. Um, pretty crazy stuff. If you want to dig into some really high powered microwaves, this is the, pl the place to do it. Look at that. That's a tower antenna. Um, very similar to what's already, you know, what the Russian woodpecker was. Got the Duga 3s in there and all that stuff. Man, this is a super long list. Uh, Ascension Island, man. Wow, what a place. If you guys have never heard of Ascension Island, you really got to go take a tour of it. I really dug into it. Um, but it's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, like right in the middle of nowhere. There you go. So, um, dig into the missile defense radars. Very fascinating map. I got a lot of ham radio operators who absolutely love the hell out of me because of these radar maps. Um, because they're always having to listen to these things. Super Dual Auroral Radar Network, Super Darns, um, they're all over the globe. They look like this. Um, they're even all over the North Pole or South Pole. You can see that they're all the way around it. There's one at Haley Station. Looks like that. There's the antennas. This is what their antennas look like. 
Uh, this is Sene. I don't know how to pronounce that. There's theirs. Um, this is Siowa Sta South VHF station. The schematic of that right there. Um, that's the Japanese one. And this is McMurdo station. So, um, Super Darns are all over the place as well. Um, they got the Tiger over here. Um, in Unwin, New Zealand. Shout out to my Kiwis. Uh, got a lot of friends down there, and here's the tiger at Bruni in Tasmania. Um, pretty fascinating stuff, guys. You know, you can't you can't find this stuff anywhere else. This is what they look like. This is a super darn for you. Pretty fascinating. So that's just my um, my you know radar section. I've got a lot of stuff in here. Digisigns, ELF, VLF stations, um, lasers and directed energy has things like the Starfire optical range. Uh, this is uh, at Kirtland Air Force Base. Pretty scary little shot right here of uh, some laser beams in the sky. As you can see, the green one's a LIDAR. Here's three green ones, same time. That's a sodium laser, it's a red laser. That can actually shoot down planes. Speaking of shooting down planes, they actually have a, a weapons testing range right over here at uh, White Sands where they do exactly that. Directed energy weapon test site north of Oscura Peak uh, at White Sands. And they got two of these. There's like a valley here. And they fly drones in the valley and they shoot them down with laser beams. So pretty fascinating stuff, man. Um, down the list, next we're at Doppler radar stations. If you guys want to see some Doppler radar stations, watch this crap. Green is Doppler radar. Got some the Canadian ones as well. It's called Canadian Sigmet. And then underneath that, terminal Doppler weather radar in yellow. And then the joint surveillance system, ASR, uh, ARS-4 air, air route surveillance radars are in red. And then you got the Doppler radars that are pointed at the ocean in blue. And suddenly we got a lot of damn Doppler radars in America. You thought your cell phone towers are bad. These Doppler radars typically have 750,000 watts. So that's, that's a, a, a lot to shake a stick at. Um, many, many other things down here. I got, you know, things like the expanded very large array EVLA. Um, these are, you know, satellite dishes. This one's pretty famous. It's been in a lot of movies. Um, giant meter wave radio telescope, very long base array, the low frequency array. This is a Russian version of the EVLA. Um, all the way down, and let's clear this off and show you guys the cell phone towers real fast. Because this is a pretty big map. It's going to take a second. This is like, uh, I think it was 800,000 cell phone towers. Um, there are many more than this. They're not all documented on this map. Uh, because, of course, it would blow up the screen. But this is what they look like. Give it just a second. Looks like it's loaded. And my screen's practically locked up. Because I'm you know, live streaming this. But just one second all right here we go that is cell phone towers in america it looks like a spiny jacket and that's that's the, the just the radiation section the emf sites I could go through the rest of this for another two hours, but I'm going to just kind of leave it right there. I hope you guys will dig through a lot of these maps. Um, they're unique. Um, explore your world. You know, it's your world. You should monitor it. Um, this is the best way I know how to do it because a picture is worth a thousand words. And if that doesn't show you that cell phone towers are already crazy, we got 5G on the way. Um, our EMF inundation is a serious problem. So I hope you guys will come over here to climateviewer.com slash EMF. Links are at the top of each of these, um, pages. My God, my internets are just going to crap now.
Look at this thing take its sweet ass time. Go ahead and do it there. Wi Fi, cell phones, Wi Fi, and email health effects and information on all that because we are inundated in an electro smog world, and that's why I created a lot of these maps. That's why my nicknames resonated, and I hope that you guys will dig through that. In addition to that, we've got the climate change section on things like uh, coal ash in ponds. Everybody's been talking about coal ash. Um, government and surveillance, geoengineering, government and surveillance has things like the Five Eyes Stone Ghost Network. All the spy facilities that Obama and Hillary and the FBI and DOJ were FISA abuse, as they like to call it. Underwater sea cables. Um, the list just goes on and on. You can see the Fukushima Daiichi fallout. You can see you know 10 most radioactive places on Earth. Um, flight routes around America. Pyramids of the world. Um, I map a lot of things. It's pretty, pretty fun for me. I hope that it's fun for you. I hope that you guys will take a look at this stuff. There's your pyramids around the globe. And I didn't even mention my reading map has another 160 maps of things like abandoned and sunken ships, ancient ruins, conquerors, and wars like the battle of battles of the war of 1812, battle of Waterloo, Pizarro's conquering of Peru. Um, this stuff is educational beyond belief. You can really dig in here. Crime sprees, disease outbreaks like Ebola, mad cow. Um, just some really, really nuts stuff in here. Uh, geoscientist, uh, geoscience and oceanography. Um, it's raining frogs, fish, and what? Uh, you talk about a crazy map. I hope that you guys will look at this one. Um, things like it rained frogs in France, it rained fish in Cambridge, um, MD, Maryland, um, rained blood and guts in Lebanon, Tennessee. What? Are you kidding me? American Journal of Science confirmed a shower of blood, fat, and muscle tissue that fell on a tobacco farm near Lebanon, Tennessee, August 1841. Yeah, that's pretty crazy stuff. Rain guts in Kentucky, frogs in Kansas City, worms in Romania, lizards in Sacramento. Wow, man, that's one of my favorite maps. You guys really should. I should do a whole video just on this. It's just insane. Rain in birds, fish, frogs, blood, spiders. Wow. Um, so, Climate Viewer 3D. Uh, know your world, man. It's it's very easy to do. It's easy to play with. All I'm doing is going down the list and clicking on buttons. And you can do this too. Um, I think you'll find it fascinating. I hope that you guys will support what I'm doing by supporting me on Patreon or PayPal. Um, this is all free of charge. And uh, I hope that you guys will share it. Because sharing is caring. Um, you know, I do all this for the love of it, to share information, um, to see my world in a very unique way and help you do the same. And I hope that you guys will come over to climateviewer.org and share it with other people because it's one of the most censored websites on the internet, especially since I put these, uh, five eyes stone ghost spy facilities on there. Um, I've gotten a lot of hate from the government IP addresses, and had to do a whole lot of uh, hardening of servers to make sure that this thing stays online. So I hope that you guys will take advantage of it. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to ClimateViewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember... It would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.